Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to our fifth IGM um, summer webinar. Um, I'll take you through an introduction to cell free systems today. Um, my name is Alexis. I'm a research assistant and PhD student at Imperial College London. I work along with the IGM measurement committee, and I've been an IGM judge, and I've also been an IGMer uh, with the team Paris Betancourt in 2018. So, yeah, that's, so I was saying like, so you're familiar with the, the process of molecular DNA assembly and expression, and you go from uh, your in silico design in your laptop to your, um, uh, to ordering your DNA uh, from a synthesis company, like IDT or Twist, and you get your DNA, and then you culture your organism, and you do some cloning, some transformation, and you pray for the colonies and protein expression. Um, the thing is, uh, it would be good to be able to remove the most tedious part, which is dealing with the living organism, um, which can be a hassle. And what if you could just drop in your DNA template uh, and just get the protein expression? So um, when we talk about cell-free systems, uh, we define three types of systems. Um, the first ones are the protein-based systems uh, where you do um, biochemical reconstitutions uh, with a minimum set of compounds, um, of components. And the other type is nucleic acid systems uh, for DNA strand manipulation or DNA scaffolding. Uh, you could do DNA origami. And the third one, which is the one we're focusing on today, um, is cell-free transcription and translation systems, TXTL systems. Does the slide switch? It didn't switch yet. What do now, you see here? Now it's slide four, five. Do you, do you see slide number five? Yeah. Okay. Is it still slide number five? Now it's six. Wait, where am yeah. I? I'm lost. Yeah, you, you have six now. Seven? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, um, we're doing this live. Um, I can't get computers to work. Um, it's fine. We're good. I got some cool slides. Um, so am I on slide number six? Yeah, now seven. Okay, so um, so I'll go back to where I think where I was before. So where are cell-free TXTL systems? Uh, it's basically all the cell machinery without the cell walls. And we talk about in vitro transcription and translation. And I was saying uh, that uh, we got CFPS, which stands for cell-free protein um, synthesis, or CFPE, which stands for cell-free protein expression. And you'd probably see, uh, read, or hear those two terms. And they basically mean the same thing. And the idea is that we recreate the central dogma mechanism inside the tube. And what we do is they break the cell, get everything that inside, get it out. And then we add a few compounds, and then we express our DNA. Did, does it switch now? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Getting better at using computers. Um, so uh, what's TXTL? Uh, TXTL stands for transcription and translation. TX is an acronym for transcription. TL is short for translation. And what you do is here on the right, I've got my DNA, which is a plasmid, or it could be a linear DNA. And I put in my DNA template, um, put it in what we call the self remix. And all this happens in vitro. And what you do is that this self remix uh, is put in an Eppendorf tube and you drop in your DNA and the magic happens here and boom, you get your protein expression and you get your protein out and that's basically what it is. So, is it switching now? Yeah, it's just loading. Okay, it's loading, so I mean, Ooh, oh, boom. No. Now it's on 10. Oh. Wait. So slide nine is loading, which shouldn't be. Uh, but slide nine was just um, basically what I'm showing here. It's like, what's the difference between in vitro and vivo systems? So let's look at this side-by-side -side comparison. 
and um, of how you would do TXTL protein synthesis compared to an in vivo protein synthesis. So TXTL is cell tree is on the left and in vivo is on the right. So in both cases, you start with a living organism and um, we'll see later that we can almost forget this, uh, this organism when we work with pure systems. Um, but we start here on the left and in cell free you grow and then you lyse your cell and you get cell extract and then you do protein expression in a cell free mix in a tube. And then you put in the DNA inside the mix and, and you, got, you got your expression. Now on the right side is what we would do when we work in vivo is it's the more classic in vivo process is that you grow your bacteria, but you do a transformation first, and then you put in the DNA inside the bacteria. And the difference is that the protein expression in vivo happens inside the organism. So this is more or less uh, an equivalent lysis process. You get the, your lysate and then you purify it to get the protein out. So, uh, we have two kinds of diff um, two different kinds of cell-free systems. Uh, we got lysate-based cell-free systems, and you can work with bacterial systems. The most common is your favorite pet E. coli, but you can also work with eukaryote systems, uh, with, for example, yeast lysate or plants, or we can even do mammalian lysate or even human cell lysate. Uh, I personally have only been working with uh, bacterial lysate. Um, and then there's another kind of cell-free TXTL system. Um, it's not really TXTL, but we call it um, the PURE system, uh, which has been introduced in 2001 by the WEDA group. And it stands for protein synthesis using recombinant elements, P-U-R-E. And uh, it's a reconstituted cell-free protein synthesis system. So, um, in our third talk today, uh, Barbara will explain further the process of making the pure system and she'll teach you how to make a pure system or a one pot pure system. So um, when did cell free systems appear? Um, the most surprising thing is that it's absolutely not a new and recent idea. So you can forget about being hip. Uh, it's been around since the late 40s. And the first cell free system was in 1984, uh, 1948, and they did express proteins using extracts of rat cell livers. And in 1961, Nirenberg and Matei found the first correspondence between nucleotide triplets and the amino acids that, the, that they encoded. Um, and they demonstrated uh, cell free synthesis of polyphenylalanine uh, with a synthetic polyuridylic acid in E. coli extract. So in the years that followed, we got uh, different cell-free systems and they played an important role in identifying the amino acids encoded by the triplets. And then in uh, 1966, you got the first usage of uh, wheat germs, uh, lysate systems, uh, uh, and then we could pretty much get a year for every new kind of system. And we jump in time and we land in 2001 uh, with a pure system from Weta. And to much more recently, 2012, the introduction of the E. coli TXTL toolbox um, by Jason Chin and Vincent Amaro. Okay, so how do you make a cell-free TXTL mix? The key idea is that you mix together the cell lysate and some additional compounds necessary for the transcription and the translation, and you put them in a tube. And in our next talk, um, so we will go into the details on how to practically make an E. coli lysate and cell free mix. And if you don't want to make your own, uh, many of the high adoption uh, CFPS platforms have been um, commercialized as kits. So currently, like for example, like there's some commercial kits that exist for E. coli at NEB, Promega, Bioneer, Kiagen, Arbor, Therma Fisher, Creative Biolabs. A lot of uh, companies provide those, those, sell those kits. So uh, cell-free um, protein uh, synthesis reactions can be performed in batch format for a simplified setup, uh, or they can be done in continuous formats, uh, which improves yields. And the reactions are 
most easily and quickly uh, set in a batch format. So I'd say use a batch format, it's just easier. Um, all the necessary reactants are just added into a single tube and incubated to protein synthesis. And then the thing is, why do we have these different formats is because uh, the duration of the batch reaction can be dependent on the substrate available and the amount of um, inhibitory byproduct that is produced. So that could result in a lower yield um, on some platforms. So if I take the continuous exchange, um, the reaction is separated from a uh, reactant rich feed solution uh, via a separate uh, like semi permeable membrane and new reactants move into the solution and byproducts move out and proteins remain in the reaction compartment. And then when you have continuous flow systems here on the right, um, the feed solution is just continuously pumped into the reaction chamber and um, where the protein of interest is and the other byproducts are pushed out uh, through a filtration membrane. So um, what are the different application um, for TXTL? Well, one of the biggest one is biomanufacturing. So you can do protein expression, uh, you can produce enzymes, antibodies, or therapeutic compounds. Um, but TXTL is also really good to use for prototyping. So you can prototype enzymatic pathways, um, different um, diagnostic systems and things like that. And they were also used in microfluidic chips um, to do some like oscillators, dynamical systems, uh, self-assembly, doing directed evolution, this kind of thing. And they're also being used for what we call synthetic life. Uh, so for example, you can create a liposome and then have some TXTL reaction in it. So what are the advantages of cell-free TXTL systems? First of all, you don't do any bacterial transformation. Um, you got a protein expression system, for example, when um, the cell is toxic, uh, uh, not the cell, um, when, the, when the protein is toxic for the cell, um, it's advantageous to use a TXTL system. Um, TXTL system can be dry freeze and rehydrated. And uh, one of the biggest advantages is that there's no GMO handling, um, no biohazard, um, so you don't work with anything that's uh, living. So um, in the recent years, uh, we've seen usage of TXTL systems in the iGEM competition. And last year, uh, the grand prize winners, uh, iGEM APFL team, they used the one port pure system, um, which was a paper-based uh, cell-free detection system. So they developed a simple uh, and a, a simple fast field diagnostic toolkit to detect grapevine diseases. So it was freeze dried, one pot pure on paper. Um, it's just, they just built a simple and cheap hardware um, designed with a 3D printer and paper. And Barbara could tell much more about it later. And then this is the picture showing up. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Loading. Okay, so it's loading. So that's a Google Slides that are awesome. Um, I had a wonderful screen capture of um, year 2018 where uh, the team uh, Paris Betancourt uh, worked to fight the issue of antibiotic resistance and uh, so I was in that team and we did design and synthesize a library of antimicrobial peptides. And it's a solution to express a protein um, that is toxic for the cell, so antimicrobial. And that's why we use the cell-free protein expression system for that. And in the next slide, there's also a picture that's missing where you see uh, iGEM year 2017 um, Delft team. Um, who again uh, were grand prize winners. So I don't know if there's a relationship between using cell free or winning the grand prize. Um, and they developed a tool to enable farmers um, to test on site if a cow was uh, suffering from a bacterial infection and uh, if it was infected with antibiotic resistant bacteria. 
Um, so they use vesicles uh, where they put a cell-free uh, system in. And now uh, I'd like to introduce you to the next cell-free webinar talks. Uh, the next talks from Zoe will take you through how to practically make an E. coli cell-free system. And then in our third talk, uh, Barbara will explain the pure system and how to make one. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, good luck with your Argent projects. And I uh, can't, can't wait to see them. Um, thank you. <laughs>